Happy New Year, everybody. It's 2021. Okay, um, we're doing another video of uh, cooking, cooking with no oven. Even though I got an oven, it's brand new and the Roy doesn't want me to use it. Anyway, so I'm taking the opportunity to make a, a prime rib roast. Well, technically it's choice. You know, people call it prime rib, but in order for it to be prime rib, the, this label has to say prime, okay? This is choice, okay? Which is the next level down from that, okay? A lot of it has to do with the the fat marbling within the center. And as you can see, there's very little marbling in here. I wish I could have picked a better one with more, more of these fat striations what happens is when it cooks the meat separates from that and makes it more tender and more juicy okay um lately because of people wanting less fat i i notice they trim all this real thin especially at the military commissary uh normally this is covered with all fat okay when in the old days right now they want less fat plus they raise the price for trimming okay so Here's my idea. I want to braise this, but I don't want to make it like a like a braised beef roast, pot, like a pot roast. So I'm going to kind of do it like a pot roast style, but with the idea is I'm not going to put any seasonings other than salt because um, when I make the gravy, the seasoning or the au jus will be in, in, in the au jus, okay? So primarily, I just want to lightly salt it and then just basically the process is going to be browning the all the outside to sear in the juices and also give it some color and then i'm going to slowly and i mean do mean slowly slowly heat it up so that the center hits uh, medium rare which would be 140 145 and then and then stop it at that point so Right now, the initial part is coloring it and searing the outside, okay? And then I'm going to leave it in here. I'm just going to put oil. You can pick your favorite oil. So, and it's just to help brown it on the outside. But I'm not going to add any seasonings because what, what's going to happen is the seasoning is going to burn. So normally I put onion soup and I, onion uh, powder and I rub it all around. But for today, I'm just going to sear it and then let it sit. Okay, I hope this fits. Okay. Okay, I didn't have the heat up real high because I didn't want the oil splashing. But I'm going to turn up the heat now. So the idea is to sear it, okay, all around. Then I'm gonna lightly. A lot of times they, in restaurants they season it extremely heavy because it all runs off the fat. The fat runs off the uh, seasoning. So a lot of times there's like even a whole crust of salt, onions, uh, garlic, salt, whatever, right, and pepper. But for this, I'm just gonna use sea salt and then. And I want to sear everything, okay? So, so, I was debating whether to use a larger pot, but I wanted to make sure that I kept it small enough to keep the heat surrounding. The problem with a smaller pot is hard to turn this over. Okay, watch out you don't splash hot oil on yourself. Like that. Okay. Out. Okay. So I'm gonna turn down the heat a little too high right now. So as you can see, it's getting brown nicely. Now, if you're not too concerned about the coloration, you don't have to do this step. You could just put it in and do it like a pot roast. Um, when I did the turkey this way, it actually because the the problem with braising it in the gravy is, in the case of turkey, the white meat turned all brown. Which, if you like dark meat, that's great. You know, it was nice and juicy. 
Uh, but the second time I made it, uh, I just did it in oil. And, see, that blood. Uh, I just did it in oil, and, it, and the white meat stayed white. And then I made the gravy separately, and I put it on the side, and it worked out perfectly. You know, the white meat stayed white, and the gravy had all the seasoning in it, and, and it worked out real well. Okay. A little too high on the heat. Okay, I'm getting a little worried about splashing hot oil on myself, so I'm going to be real careful. I'm going to be real, real careful. So it's nice and brown. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. As you can see, it's nice and brown here. And I'm going to turn down the heat really, really low. Uh, on a digital... Uh, 1.4 now I notice when I'm frying chicken the lowest setting I can go is 2.5 and that will brown the chicken crisp the skin so that's a little too high for this setting uh, I'm gonna keep this real low it's like one low on this one is extremely low okay so I'm just gonna go one above 1.2 and as you can see, the residual heat is still, still uh, uh, boiling it. Okay. Now what's going to happen is all the liquid will boil off and it'll just sit in its own juices, the fat, and then start rendering the fat, okay? So what we're trying to do here is we're just trying to slowly, we sear the outside, which will kill all the bacteria and stuff like that, and also give it a nice crust. Now we're gonna bring the temperature slowly up. It'll probably take about at least an hour and a half, maybe up to two hours, we'll, we'll see. Uh, because I got it on real low heat. Um, there's a way to do this with, uh, I've seen, uh, I've also done it with uh, braising with, uh, with wine and uh, a beef tenderloin. And you put it extremely, extremely low and you bring the water, uh, the the liquid would, which would cover the meat, you bring it up to uh, 140, 145. So that means you know that the meat will not go higher than that because the liquid itself is at that temperature, right? So if you wanted it rare, you just put it at 140. If you wanted medium rare, you go to 145 and so on and so forth. You go higher and higher with the liquid and you let it sit in there for an hour and the meat will just slowly cook all the way through but it will never go above that temperature okay now there is a cautionary note that if you don't sear it and you slowly cook this there's a chance that you might be growing bacteria and might you know uh, something something may become toxic so that's why it's always a good idea to sear the outside because all the germs from from the butchers handling it, from the packaging machine and all, and yourself. All the germs are on the outside of the meat. So when you sear it, everything gets killed, okay? And so so as you bring it up to slowly up the temperature, the, the odds are that uh, anything that was growing inside the meat will, will die off, okay? So that's just a safety note. Beef not too bad. If you're doing turkey or chicken or something like that, you want to kind of cook it as fast as possible because the you're looking at salmonella and all these other uh, germs that will give you food poisoning. Okay, so that's it. I got it on 1.2 and just let it slowly braise in its own juices. And then... Um, uh, I'll check it in about an hour and a half and see how it, it goes, okay? And then you can cook it and you can keep slowly cooking it to the doneness you want. Um, since uh, in our family, we like, I like it bloody rare and then I have, the wife likes it on the more well done side. So she always gets the outside cuts. And then, uh, and then I go for the center cuts, which would be more than likely be rare, okay? So that's it. Um, Braising a, a, a rib roast in its own fats and juices 
with, uh, with only seasoning uh, sea salt and that's it. And then later on the au jus, you season the au jus, you make a gravy out of the au jus and then you season the au jus and that seasoning will, that seasoning will, will take care of itself, okay?